New York is baffling in that it's a city that prides itself on being an absolute shithole. It's like, there's nothing good here, and people are proud of that. They're happy. <laughs> oh, it's, it's overpriced, and it's overpopulated, and, and it stinks like piss, and comics. Comics film specials here, and they all open with a joke about, yeah, he spent $8,000 a month for nine square feet, and you go, why don't you fucking leave here? Why do people stay here? But unfortunately, this is where comedy works, where people are the most miserable. Like, I'd rather be filming a special in, uh, on a beach in Costa Rica at a tiki bar right now, but they don't need comedians. They're already smiling. They're already happy, naturally. So that's why I'm doing a special here, because it's the last fucking place I want to be. Smoking through this whole set. Nice. Because that's it's one of the loopholes in the uh, law. They keep the in the smoking bans, they keep if it's part of a theatrical production, a loophole in the law, because they don't want to fuck up some faggy Tennessee Williams production <laughs> and ruin the integrity of the show. So they leave this fucking loophole open for me. If, if, if the cigarette bothers you because you're envious, vote next time. How about that? <laughs> vote, yeah, every now and then. Figure out what the fuck's going on in your community. <laughs> no, you don't vote, you got shit to do. You leave it to old people with breathing problems who will never come here. <laughs> this whole fucking generation is so unbelievably sad. If you're just getting to like party in age, you're fucked. There's nothing going on in this country anymore. It's done. Last call. It's just a suck generation. It's the most boring fucking generation in the history of people. It's all dumbed down and wanted. Wait, wait, when the, when's the last time you heard stories about rock and roll bands chucking TVs out of hotel windows or any of that shit that, that used to be fun? Like, there was fun in the world. I, 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 some of this is gonna make me sound like a grumpy old fuck, and I am, but I have, I have just cause. There's, there's nothing, as people get older, the older you get, the more bitchy you get, because that's just natural. The more you've done shit, the more jaded you get. But I, I think we're gonna be the first generation of old people. As soon as someone gets old, they complain about the new kids and all oh, these kids today, look, they're crazy. It's always that the new, it used to be always that the new generation was too deviant. These kids are out of control. They're crazy, they're immoral, look at what they're doing. In our day, if we wanted fun, we just went to a barn dance and we, we didn't even finger fuck till we were like 35 years old. <laughs> but these kids today, it was always that the new generation was over the top, and we're gonna be the first generation of elderly people complaining, but in the opposite fashion, where we're going, look at these kids today, these half faggots. We, we used to do crank off of titty dancers and shit. It was, no one got hurt, we had a lot of fun. We got some good stories and herpes out of the deal. It was a fucking good time. The blisters bring me back. These pussies, they drink a Red Bull for some pep, and they'd prefer if you went on the patio for a cigarette. And the closest they come to a fist fight is on a message board somewhere. <laughs> you looking at my girl? I'm gonna delete you from my MySpace friend. You got some block user in your future, faggot. They're about to start piss testing for adrenaline in the workplace. That's how sad this country's getting. Now shaking your urine in front of you. Is that yours, Donnie? It looks a little cloudy. Have you been having fun on the weekend? <laughs> Are we not enough fun for you here at the Verizon Wireless family? You need to seek it elsewhere? I don't think you're a team player. That's why I love hearing uh, people go, oh, that town, that's like 20 years behind the times, that fucking place, book me there. I had fun 20 years ago. <laughs> but I, I can still smoke indoors? Oh, I got ecstasy, still pure, uncut, and readily available? Oh, shit. What cavemen they must be. 
The only drugs that are even popular anymore are all the dummy drugs, all the drugs that make you more boring, all the mood stabilizer, antidepressant. Everyone's got some mental disorder they've been diagnosed with, and they take a fucking pill. I, they push them on me all the time. I got <laughs> Ruins so many relationships because I get you know, I because I think I fucking think all the time. Sorry, oh geez, oh, you, you, you think it's ADD. No, it's not ADD. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about a lot of stuff. It's not ADD. Yeah, I stutter a lot and I fuck stuff up, but I, that's because I'm always thinking, well, you're not listening to me because I'm thinking about something that's more interesting than you. I'm trying to, I'm trying to build a, a Perfect utopian society in my head. And what are you talking to me about? Bowling or what? I, 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 and I do. I have a head that just, just won't shut the fuck up. So where do the ideas come from? Do you have a, a head like that? Do you have the brain that just won't shut the fuck up all the time? For... You learn to work with it. Did you ever try to do this? I tried this in July in Tucson, Arizona, and uh, failed miserably. Did you ever try to sleep sober? <laughs> you ever try to do that? It's completely impossible. I tried. Like, I got a meeting at 6.30 in the morning. I got a flight to LA for a meeting, so I'm trying to be responsible, and I'm just laying there in a hotel. There's no people or conversation, no distractions, sober, and no television, just your head on a pillow, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., you mother... Because that's when the carnival kicks into high gear. You're almost 40 years old, you fucking loser. How long are you going to do this? How long are you just going to get drunk and amuse shitheads for a living? Well, there must be something that rhymes with orange, lorange, smarange, orange. This fucking music is playing in there and it always sucks. We didn't start the fire. Shut the fuck up! My ex-wife is in there. You never took me to the botanical garden. It was always about you. You fucking megalomaniac. You never cared. I was dying of loneliness. It was always better to the world. Shut the fuck up! You're gonna sleep. Well, I ain't not taking fucking medication for it. That's also where the ideas come from. I'll just pour some alcohol on that when it happens and try to even it out. You work with your problems. Fucking everyone's taking pills just because you're afraid of standing out or... Uh, I was terrified when my doctor told me that I had a unique and interesting personality trait. <laughs> But then he told me about new Zoloft, the Prozac, and I'd just take three pills a day and I'd blend into this fucking horrible inbred corporate landscape, and I don't care. Uh, they'll, they'll legalize any drug so long as that drug keeps you producing. That's all they give a shit about is production. You're kicking out enough boxes at the plant? Well, go, it's whatever keeps you doing that. Keeps you vaguely content sitting in a cubicle. Go ahead, FDA approved. I have a job where I alphabetize insurance forms 45 hours a week, and I noticed I couldn't concentrate so well on my job, so my doctor put me on Adderall, and now I can just breeze through my work day. I don't even notice that my empty life is being pissed away underneath fluorescent tubes. I have no highs or lows. I have no good stories. I'm just, uh, but I'm getting a lot of stuff done. I'm probably the most boring person I know, but look at me produce. I just go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, B, blah, 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 You're never going to take a pill for that. You're not concentrating because that's fucking boring and that's a natural reaction to boring. Don't concentrate. Find another way. You're gonna make a living. You get bills to pay. Buy less shit and find some fun. Suck a dick. You gotta pay bills. Suck a dick. I'm talking to you in particular. Cause you're close. Whatever. Spin around the brass pole a few times. Whatever. Say you saw the Virgin Mary in a grilled cheese sandwich and sell that shit on eBay. There's a grift in the system. 
There's always a scam. You don't have to do it just because your guidance counselor told you you'd excel at it. Fuck them over. <laughs> so this country is so bereft of imagination anymore. So fucking those pills probably have a lot to do with it. Was, I was a real slut when I was a younger girl. I slept with a lot of guys. And it's not something that I'm proud of. But I'm in therapy now, and my therapist put me on Wellbutrin and Effexor, and she explained to me through our sessions, the reason I was so promiscuous, I come from a military family. So I didn't have a stable male role model in my life. I have a low self-esteem, because I'm a little bit chunky, and I try to compensate for that by having sex with a lot of different men. Maybe you just like the cock. Is that possible? Is it possible? That's why you slept around? You like that fucking purple meat hammer that is wailing in and out of your fucking untrimmed, winter-ready New York sludge pot, and that's fantastic. Take some cock. There's nothing wrong with it. It's free fun. That's what it's there for. Jeez, don't take a pill. Take the cock. It's, it's there for that. Maybe, you, maybe your clitoris is there for a reason. Huh, huh. Clits there to attract the fucking pork sausage. It's one equal right you'll never get. You'll have, you'll have every equal right in the world, and you'll... Women, not you specifically, don't get over yourself. I'm talking, <laughs> women will never have the same equal right as men do to just... You can't sling pussy without shame attached. You'll be, you, you'll be Hillary Clinton's and you'll get equal pay, but you want to go fuck like this guy fucks on a weekend? He gets high fives, you get whore! <laughs> They have to keep some shame involved. I won't pick on you just because you're in the front. Oh, that doesn't matter. But I'm making a point. And, and, and I know it sounds base or coarse, but the reason that you can't do that as women, pussy really is the main motivating factor in all of humankind. It really is. It's what gets shit built. I'm not, I'm not good for pussy. I'm not, I'm, I'm, uh, this is a flaw in the system. Don't clap for it. Saying that's the, they know that as a catalyst. And that's why religion and government have to control supply and demand of pussy. And they do that by heaping shame upon you should you want to give away more than the federally allocated recommended daily allowance of pussy. Oh, she wants to suck more than one big whore! Shun your natural instinct, whore! Or nothing will get built. It's, it comes down to production. It really does. You know, so they have to keep that, that, that pussy like a dangling carrot, something that's hard to get, so he keeps running on the treadmill, building up more shit, sending out more boxes to the dollar store, pointless shit that no one needs. That's why cocaine is illegal. It makes pussy too easy to get. They can't have it. They will not have it. If pussy were suddenly easy to get, if it were simple for human beings to just relate on a regular level, or if he could just lay down a big fat rail on a first date and you gack it up, 10 minutes later you're sucking his dick in a dirty urinal. You're loving every second of it. Yeah, no inhibition. If it were that easy, then you wouldn't have to spend 60 hours working in a factory and saving up your overtime checks so one day you can afford a spoiler for your Honda that's gonna attract a girl's attention and then after a lengthy courting process and you meet the parents and sign the contract, maybe then one year on your birthday she'll suck your dick in a broom closet. Yeah. I feel like a whore. Should have done the bump. It's fucking awful. It's just gonna make sure you produce. Buy, buy shit you don't need. Come on, diamonds and fucking flowers. At least black people knew when they were slaves. You remain clueless. Yeah, same now. Fucking get a lot of work done. Hard work, hard work is fine if it's a work of passion, but just to work hard to buy shit to impress people, you're a fucking loser. <laughs> An empty, uh, 
asshole. Hard work, if it's, if, if it's hard work that you do for free, hard work, if it's a work of passion, you're you know, working at learning how to play the acoustic guitar, or you're trying to find my prostate when we're on ecstasy or something, that's a work of passion, sure, go. Dig in, root around, you know? This don't work hard. Awful. You worked hard to get where you are. No, I didn't. I drank, smoked, and did drugs to get where I'm at. I'm really, I'm not glorifying shit. I ain't trying to build it up, but it really is responsible for where I am. I haven't re ever tried very hard. I'm here because I, you know, drugs expanded my imagination and made me think outside of your fucking reality and cigarettes gave me the patience to sit and write those thoughts down in a comedy-friendly format that you could understand and the alcohol gives me the courage to stand up here in front of you judgmental pricks and do it with a quarter million dollars worth of cameras in your face. I didn't fucking work hard for this show. I, I, I am ill-prepared. There, be, there are people here from the first show, uh, uh, and you know, I, wow, that's a lot of different material. Yeah, just membered. <laughs> right? I, don't, I didn't want to try hard for this show because I didn't want to send the wrong message to the kids who might be watching at home. Don't fucking work hard. <laughs> Dummy, you die at the end. Did anyone tell you? Sorry. That's the alcohol. But it makes me funnier. That's why I'm, that's why I'm drinking. I, ironically, I'm drinking to be more professional. Because I'm funnier when I'm drunk. I really am. 17 years. I have AA friends that I've had for lifelong friends that all of them have had to eventually cave in and admit that I'm funny when I'm drunk. It fucking kills them. <laughs> it's like they have to deny their own religion to admit it. They like, all right, all right, you fucking... That was a good shot. I know you're fucking ripped, but... Uh, Doug, you have a serious problem, and you make jokes about it, that's how you deal with it, but I've been in the program for a long time. If you ever want someone to talk to, but don't quit tonight, though. We have tickets for the late show. But you know, we've seen you sober. It's a stuttering, awkward wreck with no self-confidence. But tomorrow, if you'd like to uh, talk to me, I'm up at 6 a.m. Fuck you. Fucking horrifying. Have an AA guy tell you to your face. He's supposed to be the know-it-all, and he tells you that your career is dependent on your disease. Kind of a scary proposition. <laughs> it's like having your psychiatrist tell you that not only are the voices in your head real, but they're accurate as well. <laughs> so I should kill the babysitter? I'm afraid so. Hang on, pour more funny down my head. Pipe down. <laughs> Jesus died for your sins. I'm doing it for your mere entertainment dollar. <laughs> That's far more admirable. Jesus never made you laugh. Never once. You never worked all week. Fucking stacking pants at the Banana Republic or whatever you do and rushed home on Friday night and dressed up to rummage through the Bible to see what crazy antics your slapstick savior was up to this week. He never made you laugh. He was a mythical, boring, unfunny fuck and I love you more. Now watch me jack off. That's not even a regular tagline. Kind of detracts from the whole purpose of this joke. But the... Why would you... I don't even understand the connection with die for your sins. What is how you, he died for your sins. Well, how does one affect the other? I, I fucking, I hit myself in the foot with a shovel for your mortgage. What, I, don't, I don't understand the, and if there is a correlation, why would you do that? Why would you die for someone's sins? Your, your sins are the only interesting thing about you dreary, bleak motherfuckers. Your sins are what make you, make you fantastic. That's what keeps us great and exciting and fun. That's what makes you 
alive, man. You should wear your sins on your sleeve. You, you should be trying to top your sins on a daily basis. When you go to work in the morning, the first thing out of your mouth tomorrow morning at work should be the dirtiest shit you did tonight, because that's what people want to hear. It makes you, ah. Right? You tell me a story, hypothetically, you tell me a story about what a good Christian kid you are and how that good book has filled you with some effervescent, loving light of Jesus that shines out of every pore in your squash. You're walking on sunshine because of the Lord. At the same time, you keep the story going real loud. At the same time, you tell me a story about that one time you kick-fucked a girl with cerebral palsy. And we'll see who draws a crowd. <laughs> even, even your make-believe slapstick Jesus on a stick would have to walk away from you right now. Oh, that's very, that's very nice. I pray for you too, but I, I really want to hear this. Ah, start over. <laughs> you did what? <laughs> Was she into it? Oh my God. <laughs> what kind of industrial lubricant do you... I can't believe I died for these stories. These stories are fascinating. <laughs> Absolutely fucking silly. If you're Christian, you get cheesed off of the Jesus. I got Jew-hating stuff to follow it. So, I mean, you are a shithead, but I can make you feel like you're not the only shithead. It's like a fucking big blistering chunk of Jew-hating coming right your way right now. I, didn't, I, I wrote this uh, bunch of Jew-hating stuff. I didn't intend to. I was over in Scotland. For, every year in August in Edinburgh, Scotland, they have the Fringe Festival. It's the biggest arts festival in the world. It's a whole month long, and I'm there in August, and uh, some jackass writer for the uh, London Times, he's, trying to, he's writing a story about anti-Semitism at the Fringe, and they had found a review of mine from earlier in the festival, this anti-Semitic guy, and, he, and, and where I had been quoted out of context, like, oh, it, just a string of blurbs. He says shocking things like blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And one of the things I had said that he quoted was, I hate the Jews. <laughs> Which sounds anti-Semitic. <laughs> so all of a sudden, I get thrown into his little piece of literature, and I had said it. I had said it, yeah, without question, but I had said it like in a happy, fun-loving, Jew-hating way. There's no animosity. I, it wasn't even a bit of mine. It was just some aside when I was rambling about fucking Mel Gibson was in the news at that time, and I'm rambling about him being called anti-Semitic, going, why is he getting so much press? He's an actor. Who gives a fuck what he thinks? I need press. I hate the Jews. Give me press. <laughs> And ironically, <laughs> bam, 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 banging on the door. It's a fucking funny story. If you know me, if you guys have known me for a while, I've been doing this 17 years, and I, I, I could fill three CDs worth of just the Christian bashing alone I've done over my career. I've done Mormon bashing and Muslim bashing. I'll do, I'll do more Scientology bashing once I have a stronger legal team, but... <laughs> But it wasn't, it wasn't until this phone call that I realized I've never done any Jew bashing in my whole career. All the religion bashing I've done, I never fuck with the Jews. I'm like, what? how did they ever escape? <laughs> and they do. They, you know, in religion bashing, Jews never get fucked with because A, they don't have the aggressive recruiting policies that other religions do. They don't have billboards every 30 feet. Yeah, be a Jew or burn in hell. Jew God is watching you. They're not banging on your fucking door with pamphlets. We want to talk to you about Judaism. So they don't get shit for that. They don't get shit because they have that Holocaust sympathy they can surf on for another 15 years till the last survivor dies or till History Channel goes out of business. But and the Jews, to their credit, they don't have the history of atrocities that other religions have. They don't, because they fucking lost all the time. Sorry. Like, 
but they don't. Yeah, they, they're, they're not like, you know, the Muslims and Catholics. The fuck. I've heard so many comics doing bits about this new pope. Oh, isn't it scary this new pope used to be a Nazi? And you go, not when you look at that track record side by side. The Nazis versus the Catholic Church. The Nazis only lasted a dozen years and they got their ass handed to them in a high hat. <laughs> Catholic Church has, been, has a far more prosperous and prestigious record of murder and torture and tyranny and oppression and nonsense, not to mention the kid fucking, and they're still around and more popular than ever. I'd be far more afraid to hear someone go, you know that new Nazi? He used to be a pope. No shit. I'm fucking out of here. That guy's dangerous. <laughs> so fuck the Jews. That's what I'm saying. I guess fuck the Jews. I'm sorry. I never said it over the course of my career, but fuck the Jews. Just for being a religion at all, you're as complicit as the rest in the retardation of human intellectual progress. Fuck you two. Fuck you. My brother's a Jew. My brother's a Jew and I fucking fuck him too. I hate his guts for it. Not like I'm like hate, hate level, but fuck, what do you, do you think? He converted, because the only humorless cunt in his life that would ever fuck him twice, he had to cave in and marry her. Because he's afraid to die alone, but he, but he doesn't mind settling for less, and now they're together and in a passionless swamp of a relationship. And, and they teach their kids that shit. See, the parents wouldn't have him if he wasn't converted to Judaism, because they're racist. And there's another reason to fuck the Jews. I don't like racists. Fuck you too, Jew. You're not good enough if you're not a Jew. Fuck you. Mostly I hate the Jews because they're wicked annoying. Can we agree on that? <laughs> really, they're wicked annoying. <laughs> of all the religions I, I've been around, the Jews have a tendency to throw their Judaism into whatever conversation you're having. Like any topic, whatever the subject. Whoa, that's funny because I'm a Jew. Oh, oh, what the, oh, I have a typical Jewish mother. And I say I grew up Jewish, but my Jew family had Jew, 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 Jew. That's all I got to say. Jew, Jew. Why, 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 why do you keep saying Jew? Why do you keep saying Jew? I'm at an airport bar with you. I have to talk to you, but can you stop reminding me that you're irrational in every third sentence? It's like, it's like people who are really into their astrological sign and they have to pitch that into whatever conversation you're having to define themselves. That's funny, I'm a Virgo. Here's my Virgo coming out again. <laughs> You're gonna have to excuse me. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. It's because I'm a Virgo. No, it's because you're a douchebag. And you've been busting my balls all day. It has nothing to do with your astrological sign or some alignment of the stars. It's because you're a shithead and it's time for you to take individual responsibility for who you are. Don't act like if your parents had fucked a month earlier, you'd be feeding me chili dogs and letting shit slide. You're an asshole. Be who you are. But I'm a Jew. We naturally carry a lot of guilt. It's a Jewish thing. No, it's a you thing. You, that bucket in that chair. It has nothing to do with Judy. If you have guilt, maybe you're weak of character. Maybe you're fucking guilty of something. I don't know. Maybe you just stole that bottle of Jaeger out of my freezer. And you're trying to, but it has nothing to do with some ancient tribe of blah, blah, blah. That didn't, that's not attached to your DNA, right? By the, by, the, by the same logic, we all come from apes, but I don't throw ape in every conversation. Use ape to define myself. Use ape as an excuse to defecate in my thumbless mitt and then hurl it at you. Uh, I'm sorry, did I, did I just splatter you with wet feces? I'm sorry, I have a very rich ape upbringing, a strong ape heritage. I, 
German Eep, 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 I'm really worthless as an individual. Anybody, anybody who defines themselves solely on their, their race or their religion or their nationality, if that's the first thing out of your mouth, well, what are you all about? Well, if that's the first thing on your MySpace page, well, I'm an Irish American, but what the fuck is that? Who, well, you got nothing else. Community college and something else, but you use that fucking trivia because you got nothing to say. <laughs> Useless. <Good enough>. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of out of shit. Not in this set. I mean, I have some stuff I put on paper, but in the long term, I, I think I'm out of shit. <laughs> Fucking cannibalizing my own. 17 years, what else do you have to say? If I die soon, don't ever say I died too young. <laughs> Every time an artist dies young, I got like nine more days before I'm 40. If I still have that three in front of my number, maybe they'll say I died young. If I had the four, died early perhaps. <laughs> died not as late as he could have. <laughs> But every time an artist dies young, like Kurt Cobain or whatever, there's always the people, it's so sad. He had so much more to give. How do you know? Maybe he was out of shit. <laughs> How do you know? He's done. He got all the money, he did all the drugs, he fucked all your holes, and that's the American dream. And when you're done with that, you go, oh, that's why they call it a dream. It's bullshit. I'm still empty. And he cashed out. Maybe. How do you know what any artist had left? How do you know if Jimi Hendrix hadn't have died, he wouldn't have wound up doing Super Bowl halftime duets with Elton John right now? <laughs> Rocket Man! And you're going, this is tragic. Why didn't that guy die? He was my hero. I don't want to see this. It's fucking pathetic. How do you know if Lenny Bruce hadn't have died, he wouldn't have wound up taking over Andy Rooney's spot at the end of 60 minutes? Just some crusty old cunt with wiry eyebrows bitching about ATM fees at a cluttered desk. How do you know? Maybe he's out of shit. But back to nationalism. <laughs> Nationalism does nothing but teach you how to hate people that you never met. And all of a sudden you take pride in accomplishments you had no part in whatsoever and you brag about. You know, like the Americans would go, fuck the French. Fuck the French. If we hadn't saved their ass in two world wars, they'd be speaking German right now. You go, oh, was that us? That was us? Was, was that me and you, Tommy? We saved the French? <laughs> Jesus. I know I blacked out a little bit after that fourth shot of Jägermeister last night, but I don't, I don't remember. I know we went through to Wendy's drive through We were going to get one of them fresh set of sandwiches. It looked so alluring on the commercial, but then we ordered it and realized we had no money and we had to ditch out before the second window. And that was douchebags in line behind us with the bass music probably got our order and out. We laughed about that, but I don't remember saving the French at all. I, I went through the last 10 calls on my cell phone and there's nothing incoming or outgoing to the French looking for muscle on a project. I checked my pants, there's no mud stains on the knees from where we were garroting krauts in the trenches at Verdun. I think we didn't do anything but watch sports bloopers while we got hammered. I think we should shut the fuck up. It's silly. All that stuff. Tradition and heritage as dead people's baggage. Quit carrying it. Did you make it up? No. It's 
It's passed on to me. Pass it back. <laughs> Every immigration argument that you hear, they, they never come from a, like, uh, well, how does it affect you personally? Well, you know, these immigrants, they come to our country, they burden our tax system. What they do is they come here and they get into our education system and our health care, and I gotta pay the taxes. My taxes have to pay that. Well, what the fuck are you doing to me? Every time you have a kid, every time you have a kid because it's American, I should pull up a chaise lounge and wave a flag while 15 of those things come out of you, pay every, oh, I can't wait to pay for these, they're American. I have a vasectomy and an abortion on my record, but I can't wait for all your fucking fat headed mis Midwestern kids to come out of you. What are you, Catholic? Come on, be fruitful and multiply. Love it, love it. I'll get a second job. No, keep. Well, these immigrants, they don't fuck, they don't speak the language. Then don't talk to them. <laughs> well, I solved your problem. That was quick. You know who speaks the language perfectly? Your next door neighbor. You've lived there eight and a half years. You've never said one fucking word to that guy. <laughs> You avert eye contact should you check the mail at the same time. <laughs> so why would you give a shit with the guy selling ganip ganops in a cart in the park speech? It's none of your fucking business. And all, this, all the cliched arguments like that, well, they're, they're lazy, they're shiftless, and they're criminals and all this. They, all those arguments go against the main cliched argument of their taking American jobs. I live on the Mexican border. I live seven miles off the Mexican border in a town, Bisbee, Arizona, a little town. <laughs> I can go out any day and watch Border Patrol arresting these guys by the dozen, 11 at a time out of a Dodge Omni, like a clown car with plastic cuffs. And you're right, they don't speak the language and they probably have no education. They don't have fucking shoes half the time. You know, like barefoot and tattered castaway like Gilligan's Island shorts and hey, the fucking dirty t-shirt and a dehydrated and wandering a desert for four days. And if that guy is as qualified for your job as you are, you're a fucking loser of such epic, humiliating proportions. I would be ashamed to have anyone find out that guy took my job. He doesn't speak English. What, did they do your job training in pantomime, shithead? <laughs> oh, see it coming. Point, point. I see it, point, point. Crank, 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 crank. You're out of here, mullethead. That guy's more qualified. <laughs> Fucking asshole, you should have tried harder. Nobody bitches about immigrants taking their job if that person has skills of any level. <laughs> Not here, fucking brain surgeon sitting around the Beverly Hills Hotel Lounge. You know what really chaps my ass, Barry? <laughs> Scandinavian fellas are coming over taking all our good neurosurgery positions. <laughs> the Norwegians specifically. I say we down ourselves a bottle of Jack Daniels and go stomp us some Ouija ass. The first Ouija we see. We jump, jump, jump out of that explorer and pound him. <laughs> Fucking immigrants. All started with that Einstein. Once they brought him over from Germany and we didn't have any good genius jobs, it was a trickle down effect. Steal at your job. Hate, hate, hate. Fear, fear, fear. Hate, hate, hate. Fear, come on. They're taking your jobs and terrorists are trying to blow up your Ford Focus specifically. You need some fucking... Where's my Purell? I touched the doorknob. There's a new fever or flu. There's a big faggot, sober, responsible, boring, dull, hand sanitizer generation and I can't get the germs off me fast enough. I'm afraid. <laughs> fucking fag. Faggots. I, I try to qualify. I use faggot too liberally, but I use it as a word of weakness. I attach no sexuality to the word and if you're gay and you're in here and you're offended, I'll be at the door on the way out and I'll suck your dick just to show that I meant no offense. I'm not gonna get wicked into it and like yank on your balls like, like you're coked up and that's the only way you can come. I'll just pinch it with two fingers and 
<laughs> but just to show that I mean no disrespect, because it's too strong of a word to let go. Faggot is a good word. So, you know, I got a little sore on my lip right there to match the one that broke out on my dick from this stress. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you know what? I, I, I was a player, not a fucking spectator in this life, honey. You look at a herpes like a skateboarder looks at a skin knee when you play along. Now. Ain't that big a fucking deal. And I ain't that Indian anymore. I'm an old man and don't give a shit. Anyway, let's move on. I was trying to segue into kid fucking, but segue is gone. Let's just jump right in, shall we? Internet predators. Yeah, oh, they're very popular all over the television. They fucking catch a predator, MySpace, oh, fuck yeah. Like, I don't know, because I, I was a kid at one point. I don't remember, but it is pictures. But uh, I remember we didn't have the internet, but to avoid predators, our parents would go, uh, hey, uh, son, don't talk to strangers. Some of them might try to fuck you. And you go, oh, thanks, man, thanks. Thanks for that heads up. And then you just went about your day. Does that not work for the internet now? <laughs> you don't have to parent anymore? <laughs> oh, the internet! Like, they have some crazy way of getting around the don't talk to strangers. What the fuck? If you're a parent and you're in here, I know you don't want to hear this, You'll argue with me and you'll say that I, I'm twisting the fact I'm wrong, but this is the truth. That, that probably, and huge probability, when I say probably, astronomical odds, Vegas odds, statistical probability, probably nobody wants to fuck your kid. I know you don't want to hear it. You want to think that child is so ultra fuckable that all the pedophiles there, they're jockeying for position right now down at the seesaws, waiting for him to come out of first period. Wait for it. Not that chunky kid, the O'Neill kid. That's what we're all here for. High five, high five. If you wanted your kid to get fucked, just to prove to your neighbors in your gated community that your kid's hotter than their kid and you sent your kid out as bait and you put him in a Catholic schoolgirl skirt with no underpants and you made him hop on a pogo stick to school. So, so his little pink fleshy hindquarters shone so temptingly towards traffic he would still probably graduate school having never been pooned and then what an asshole you'd look like trying to brag around a gated community at the next cocktail mixer. It's just by the grace of God that no, no one ever fucked him. It's only because of my hypervigilance and the work of my congressman getting more laws passed on the internet that he never got fucked. <laughs> if I were a parent, I would prefer that pedophiles be on the internet. There's no more pedophiles in the world than there ever have been. They act like the internet is creating pedophiles where there were none. If I were a parent, if you exist anyway, stay on the internet, stay jacking off in your basement in South Carolina, as opposed to the old fashioned way where they actually went down to your schoolyard, they did laps around the playground, and smarties on a fishing line trying to fly fish little junior into the Oldsmobile. Keep beating off on the internet. Just don't fuck the kid. That's, that's what it's about, right? Just don't fuck the kid. That's all you should worry about. But that's not what the, the, fucking, the attorney general, his, he says his, his number one focus is to stop the kid fucking. But he doesn't, he wants to go after the internet. He's not going after the guy with the kid and the camera. He just wants to use that fear mongering to get more government control in your life, more legislation, more, oh, no, I don't want to have to be responsible for my own kid. You take care of it, Mr. Government. <laughs> and if I get tired of it, I'll just vote for the other party. <laughs> and that'll make a difference. Stop it, huh? Child pornography, rampant on the internet. Have you seen it? <laughs> Attorney General, oh, we need to stop this. Child pornography is rampant on the internet. We need more government involvement. Because I've never seen child pornography on the internet, but I've seen every other type of 
deviant, grotesque, sometimes stimulating, always clever, every other type of pornography that two eyeballs can absorb. You get into one good fruitless coke yank where you're all gacked up on blow and you're just beating off till the band plays because hookers won't answer their phone at this hour. You, you know it's not gonna work. It ain't gonna finish it. This is a cold, dead eraser in your hand right now. You, you wake up, you punch it in the face. You fucking wake up and talk to me. Uh, wake when we bought this shit. You wake it up now. And you just start clicking on random porn links and you got pop-ups everywhere and that chick looks hot. Click on that and you go everywhere. You just keep seeing shit. It's never what it's advertised. 18-year-old amateur hot co-ed action and you click on it and it's some fucking bondage enema porn, some fucking <laughs> amputee porn. I see what, prego popper, fucking lactating mama, all that flat top fucker. I mean, they all sound like funny shit. They all exist. Shit I make fun of, midget porn. It's funny to say, but it's out there. It's like the comic relief porn I look at after I just jacked off to something hugely uncomfortable. And I go, right, well, let's go look at midget porn and laugh. <laughs> Someone's into this. <laughs> you gay tard. <laughs> but it's all out there. All this shit. Never saw someone fuck a kid seen three old queers. Go to my website, on the forum on my website. Seriously. They have a thread called the Tsunami of Poon where all these guys just post the most disturbing pictures to fuck with everyone else. Three old queers, is three old guys in their 70s. They look like any kind of, you know, fez wearing fucking Shriners, but now they're all naked. One sucking the other one's dick and the other two are making out very passionately, which is more disturbing than even the blow job is the other two silver haired. Uh, it's like, ah, seen that, ever seen the child boy? I've seen cock fingering on the internet. Have you seen <laughs> cock fingering? I've seen it several times randomly surfing porn. Digit in the male urethra. Objects in the male urethra. Seen cock finger, I've seen it several times, yet I've still never managed to see someone fuck a child randomly. So if, if child pornography is rampant on the internet, cock fingering is probably occurring in this room as we speak. <laughs> I have no children. If I, if I had children, once people have kids, they get all fucking weak and they have that genetic defect that makes them want to protect but make other people like the government do it for them. I don't, I don't have a child. Maybe I'd feel differently if I did. Well, once you have kids, I don't know. I know I've had an abortion I've, with my wife and... It's been five years probably now. I just want to say, still a great decision. Every Roe v. Wade anti-abortion rally that comes out, they'll find some fucking crying cunt from a trailer park and put her behind a podium and pat her back so she gets attention. And she goes, I regret it to this day. I had an abortion because I was in a lot of trouble and I wish I had that baby back in my... Us we don't agree on much, my wife and I, but we agree that was the best decision we ever made. Still, five year anniversary, glad we fucking killed the baby. Five years later, still glad, still happy, no guilt, no regret. Have a lot of regrets about how handled the relationships, and, but never, the baby never brought up. Just saying, in case you ever come to that point where I'll regret it down the line. We haven't. You don't hear that side of the story. Just saying. I got, I got, an, I got this anti-abortion flyer that we, they were sticking them under everyone's windshield wiper in the parking lot of this place in Texas, and it had a picture of a dead fetus on the front. You know how the the pro-life folk are so fond of the dead fetus photo? They get a picture of an aborted fetus and they run home and they blow it up large on a placard and they bring it down to their protest rally and they shove it in your face at 9.30 in the morning. Look at that! You look at that! This is what abortion does right there! Don't you turn away! This is abortion! 
You're like, I'm just going to the ATM. I'm not going in this place. I'm just clear the sidewalk, lady. I'm hungover. But I'm like a barf anyway. But they, they do that. The idea is that that picture is supposed to be so disturbing and so disgusting that it will single-handedly change your whole view of the abortion issue as, as though live childbirth were really pretty to look at when that living monster is actually ripping out of you. It's all covered in blood and mucus and Sputums flying everywhere, and the fucking thing screaming. Ah, you're fucking screaming. Everybody's screaming. Your, your husband's vomiting through a surgical mask <laughs> while trying to maintain a comforting eye contact. <laughs> and now you're snatching the asshole. Have all been torn into one. Big open septic manhole. Look at it! Don't you turn away! Oh, yeah, you put a picture of that under my windshield wiper. I'll frame it and put it over the piano. That's, that's adorable. It's a little sweetheart. But this little peaceful, freeze dried, aborted fella laying all nighttime on a comfy pillow next to a ruler, he's disgusting. Oh. Shame be that. <laughs> like I said, I've had an abortion. I've been party to an abortion. So, and we don't know what became of it. When we had an abortion, we just uh, shuffled out the front door. We didn't tag its ear or keep in touch, <laughs> track it on a GPS system. We didn't have pen pals. No, we fucking left. So if I see a picture of an aborted fetus, there's a party that's got to wonder a little bit. Hey. <laughs> Stevie, anything? It really looks like me at all. Come on. Come on. There's a little bit. I think he's got my scowl. <laughs> if you've had an abortion, it really makes the whole idea, the, uh, uh, the whole concept of heaven a lot more disconcerting if you've had an abortion, as irrational or illogical as that idea is, it's still, it's depressing to think about if there were a heaven and that you fought through the white light and got up to the pearly gates, that'd be the first dead relative waiting for you there, all angry and pinch-faced. Eh. Oh, look who's here. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it took your time, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Looked like you were having a lot of fun down there. Yeah. You know, they took pictures of me. They took pictures of me. Right me next to a ruler, for Christ's sake. Would you know my name? <laughs> <laughs> So I, so I get the flyer. It's got the dead fetus on the front. On the back of the thing, it's got the whole pro-life propaganda screed. At the bottom, the guy who prints these things for a living, for fun or profit or whatever his motivation is, he puts his name and phone number at the bottom in case you want to order more. <laughs> And I'm drunk with a phone. <laughs> and the guy answers his phone. It's not even, it's not even a business. There's no, it's a dude in rural Wisconsin answering his phone in the bedroom. Oh! And I want to fuck with him, but I want to be original. You don't want to just be drunk and trying to throw logic at this problem. You're just going to waste cell phone minutes. That's like trying to kick water uphill. You ain't going to win. <laughs> So what I did is I came at him and I attacked him from the more conservative angle where I accused him of being the worst type of child pornographer on this planet. <laughs> this is sick! I can't believe what I'm looking at, sir. This is a child in this photograph. 
That's not a choice, that's a child. And for you to distribute photographs of naked children around my neighborhood, you're attracting the most deviant type of child predator on this planet. Right now, preterm necrophiliac child molesters are masturbating like frenzied apes in cages to your handiwork, sir. Don't you do, 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 do me. You knew what you were doing. You could have photoshopped a bikini onto that little baby. You could have airbrushed a tasteful one piece but you chose not to, cause this is how you get your rocks off, and I hope you burn it out. Let's I don't get here very often. I'm glad I had the opportunity again. So, I, so, I, so I can close strong and say. Fuck the Yankees. I want to close with fuck the Yankees. Yeah, fuck the Yankees. How about that? Fuck the Yankees. Fuck you and your Yankees. Fuck the Yankees. Yes, uh, fuck the Yankees for several reasons. You want to go through all of them? Fuck the Yankees. A, they bought their team. Yes, they bought their team. They spent the most money they're supposed to win. Like, okay, not fuck. If you have money on the Yankees, different story. If you have money on any team, okay, go ahead and cheer for that team. It's kind of like having stock in a company. You have an investment, you're cheering for that. But if you're just gonna be some fucking bloat-headed alcoholic drink, drinking overpriced beer in the stands and paying too much money for parking, and they're gonna yell for a team, have some character and pick an underdog. If you're just yelling to yell, pick an underdog. Why not? The Yankees are supposed to win. So for you to be a dildo arrogant fan on top of that, that's like going to a casino and cheering for the house and being an asshole about it. Fucking zip up to the fucking Indian casino and just set up shop right behind a blackjack table and go, oh, dealer busted your ass, bitch, huh? That's my fucking dealer. I chose that dealer. I got my deal dealer hat on. I spent food money for this hat. I'm hungry. What the fuck is that? And fuck the Yankees most, because they're the reason that you have to go outside to smoke cigarettes. And the reason that they just banned trans fat and food. They're telling you how to eat in this city, how to live your life, what you can do on your own property. They just banned, fucking, like, they're trying to ban uh, uh, like, iPods and crosswalk. State Supreme Court in this state, 10 days ago, upheld a ban on dancing in nightclubs. Anybody know this? Nightclubs, not, not fucking Utah, not Footloose, New York City. Tough guys, aren't you? You're fucking standing out like fucking bitches smoking outside. They tell you what you can put in your food, what you can eat, where to dance, where to walk. You can't fucking use my cell phone behind the wheel of my car. I'm a tough motherfucker. Before you advertise how tough you are, you might want to go into the bathroom and do some of Bloomberg's cock smell out of your assholes because it seems to me that you are just little bitches to City Hall. And that's why I say fuck the Yankees too. Cause the Yankees, what you were all rallying around and getting pumped up and badass about when you should have been down at City Hall 60,000 of you getting fucking amped up. Next time someone even mentions a smoking ban, there should have been 60,000 of you pricks fucking booing and throwing batteries at the guy who suggested it. You distracted motherfuckers. I gotta go. See you outside smoking. I'm not showing applause. This is where credits roll. It's kind of part of the thing. I'd rather be back there. Don't sit down. I don't want this. It's not real. You're lying. I like you anyway. Fuck the end. Right. Just sit quietly. It'd be, it'd be better credits if the audience said. That, that'll be credits. That would be real for like 60% of my show. All right.
Can I go down? 